What's good, everybody? In today's video, we're going to be looking at three problems on how to interpret and understand average rate of change from a graph. Really hope this video is helpful for you all. As we start this video off, everyone, the most important thing we need to know is the average rate of change formula, which is just the same thing as the slope formula. So we're talking about the change in y divided by the change in x, which is y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2, right? Sometimes you'll see m instead of the change in y and x. Same formula. Now, for us to solve, we have to calculate each of these average rate of changes. Typically, students get a problem like this wrong because they want to eyeball the graph and, and basically <laughs> make a, a best educated guess, and that doesn't always work. So when we look at our the first zero to our one, we have 2 minus 0 over 1 minus 0, which just gives us 2 over 1, which is the same as 2. So that is the average rate of change, right? And we're just talking about miles per hour, right? So 2 miles per hour. Sometimes this just helps people understand the, the, the unit. So now we go on to the second one, and now we're going from hour 1 to hour 2. So now the coordinates change. So we have 3.5 minus 2 all over 2 minus 1. We get 1.5. Hold up, hold up. Yep, we got 1.5 over 1, which is just the same as 1.5. So there that goes for us. Right? That's the second one. We know that's probably not right because the average rate change of the first the hour zero to one is greater. So we know L answer choice two isn't correct. So we go to hour two to three. So now we're looking at the coordinates three and 4.5 and two and 3.5. So when I set this up at 4.5 minus 3.5 all over three minus two. So this is just giving me one to one, right? So we know the average rate of change is just one mile per hour and then when we go to the last part right we're talking about hour three to four we have five minus 4.5 all over four minus three this is just basically going to give us 0 0.5 over one which is just the same thing as half so when we look at all these numbers that we've circled the greatest rate of change is going to occur from hour zero to hour one. Yes, in this problem, you probably could have looked at the line and say, hey, Mr. Peters, this was the steepest part of the graph. Yes, you probably could have done that, but like I said, it is not always gonna give you the right or accurate answer. But in problem number two, we're gonna look at a similar problem that's a little bit different because of the wording. In problem number two, the, the, the difference here from the first problem is this word right here slowest. So they're asking us which one of these intervals is going to have the slowest average rate of change. So having a positive or a negative in front of our average rate of change is probably not going to affect, to affect it. And I'm going to show you how. So let's look at zero to five seconds, right? So we're talking about these two order pairs right here, right? So once we do that first one, we're going to have 46 minus 19 divided by 0 minus 5. And this is going to give us 27, well, negative 27 over 5, right? So that's our first average rate of change. Then we go from 5 to 10 seconds. So now... We have 20 minus 19 all over 10 minus 5. So this is going to give us a positive fraction of 1 over 5. Remember, they're asking us for the slowest average rate of change. So now we continue this process. We go on to answer choice 3, right? 10 to 15 seconds. So now I do 20. minus 14 
all over 10 minus 15. So this is going to give me a positive 6 on top, negative 5 on bottom. So we're going to have a negative 6 over 5. Now my very last one, which is 15 to 20 seconds, let's just double check this and make sure we, have, we, we know all the average rate of changes. So now we have 17 minus 14, right? Y1 minus Y2 all over 20 minus 15. And this is going to give us an answer of 3 over 5. So now let's say we compare all of these, right? And let's slide over. So the first fraction is going to be, let's see, 27 over 5 is going to be negative 5 and 2 fifths, right? Second one, or the, the third one, I should say, is going to be negative 1 and 1 fifth. So now they're asking us, what is the slowest rate of change? So right now, it doesn't matter that there's a negative in front of our answers. We're just saying, hey, when we just look at how fast or slow the average rate of change increases or decreases, what interval is going to be the slowest? And when we look at our answer, we should know that the fraction 1 over 5 is the smallest out of all these fractions slash mixed numbers. So for this answer choice, our answer choice should definitely, definitely be 2, which is 5 to 10 seconds. But before we go, we really hope that you've been enjoying this video. We have one more problem where we look at interpreting average rate of change from a graph. In this last problem, guys, we're not calculating the average rate of change or anything like that. But what they want us to do is basically interpret the graph and figure out where is this graph decreasing over what interval, right? So right now, we're specifically talking about the x-axis. You could probably tell by the numbers that are associated with the answers. But just remember that on the y-axis, after reading the problem, we know we're talking about height in feet. And then on the x-axis, we're going to be talking about time in seconds, right? And typically with these type of problems, students only get this wrong for two things. They just don't understand how to interpret it or they're moving too fast. So basically they're saying, hey, when is the ball's height decreasing? We know at 48 feet, this is where the ball starts, right? And then we throw it into the air. We know the highest point is going to be about 144 feet, and it's going to go all the way to the ground, right? That's the x-intercept. So just, just off quick, right, we know when between x is 0 and 2.5, and it's increasing, right? That's what's happening. So we know A cannot be the answer, or answer choice one, right? Then when we look at the second answer choice, it's, it's basically saying when X is greater than zero and less than 5.5, but we know that's not true because it's not decreasing the entire time. There's parts where it's increasing. So we should know that this is wrong as well. And when we look at our answer, guys, the reason why it's answer choice three, and typically what they would do is they would have the same exact answer choice and they would have an or equal to. And I really want to focus on this. Why is there a not or equal to sign for our answer choice? The reason why is that ball does not start decreasing its height until after 2.5 seconds. So as soon as it hits 2.6 seconds, it's starting to come down from its highest point. But at 2.5, it just stopped. And when I say stopped, right, so it came all the way up. Boom, 2.5 seconds. It's not going any higher. But as soon as we hit 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, now we know that it's going to start going all the way down or decrease, I should say. So that is why our answer choice is 3. And we know once it hits the ground at 5.5, it's not decreasing anymore. It's at zero. It's at the ground level, meaning it cannot, it can't, the, the height can't decrease. We really hope that this quick review 
on interpreting graphs and understanding average rate of change is helpful for you all. Smash the like button for us, subscribe to the channel, and leave comments for future videos you guys would like to see on our channel. Or if you had questions on today's video, thank you guys so much for joining us today on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peter.